Hello there, and thank you for joining me for another day of 100 Days of Kubernetes. For those who are new to my channel, my name is Anais, and this is the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days, and me sharing with you here right on my YouTube channel. Now, in the previous video, we took a look at GitOps and Argo CD. And I mentioned that Argo actually is comprised of four different projects, Argo CD, Argo Workflows, Argo Events, and Argo Rollouts. Now I have a pretty nice demo prepared around Argo Rollouts with somebody else for Prometheus Day around KubeCon EU. So if you're not signed up to that, sign up and check out our demo, our live demo. No, not live demo, <laughs> check out our demo. <laughs> Now, this video, I want to take a look at Argo events and Argo workflows. They go pretty much hand in hand, and I just want to give an overview of how they are used, why you would use them, the different resources that are available, how you get started. Also, I just want to elaborate before we dive into Argo workflows and Argo events real quick. Why are we actually bothering with it? Why are we bothering to get started with those tools in the first place? A lot of times when you're learning something new, whether it's around cloud engineering, DevOps, anything related or anything at all by that matter, you want to be able to demonstrate your skills. Now you can do that with, by working in public, working on GitHub, uh, sharing blog posts around your knowledge or similar. But you could also do that by figuring out those different open source tools and then maybe getting involved with the community or sharing then content around those tools like I'm doing right here, right? And that demonstrates that you have experience getting on board with those tools, that you have experience using those tools, and then those skills are translatable to different tools. A lot of times at the workplace, we actually use paid tools that are quite expensive. They might have a two week free trial or something similar, but not all tools have that. So you might not be able to get the experience with the actual tool, but then when you're asked about it, you can kind of translate those skills from one tool to the other and be like, okay, I don't have specific experience with this one paid tool, but I have experience with a similar open source tool of it. And then it, you basically, your profile becomes amazing and it's already amazing. And then you can shine in the interview. Okay, so we're here at our practical drawing board. Let's take a look at what Argo events and Argo workflows actually are. Let's assume this is our Kubernetes cluster. And within the cluster, we have different namespaces. In this case, Argo events. And then in this one, we have Argo workflows. Now, when we set up Argo events and Argo workflows, the process is quite similar. We first create a new namespace and you can take a look at one of the previous videos that I've also tagged up there in the corner on what namespaces are and how they are used. And then once we have the namespace, we will install a list of different custom resource definitions for each Argo events and Argo workflows within that cluster that we basically use then within our Kubernetes cluster that we can access within the Kubernetes API and that extend our Kubernetes API. Now they come with custom resource definitions as well as custom controllers that help us uh, or basically provide all of the Argo specific resources. Now, what is Argo events? Argo events is basically there to listen for anything that could happen, any triggers anything of or external, any ex external events. <laughs> Listen to external events. And then once it has registered that, oh, something happened, it has to trigger and well, an outcome. Okay, so we listen to something, we listen to specific uh, scenarios, and then once those scenarios happen, we want to have a result, we want to have an action to take place, okay? So for that, we need, first of all, we need an event source, event source, and then once we have the event source, so we can tell through the event source, we can tell Argo, these are the internal within the cluster events or external events that we want to listen to, that we want to track. And those could be several different kinds. There are about 22 different kinds of event sources that you could tell Argo events to listen to. Now, once we have the event source, we want to have um, an event bus. And the event bus is also installed within this namespace over here. Okay, the event bus and source all in sub within the Argo events namespace. And now once the event source registers that something has happened, it will tell the event bus. And the event bus will then tell a sensor. And the sensor checks whether certain conditions have been met that are within our specifications. And if they have been met, we want to take an action, which is the trigger. 
Now the weird thing is, I thought that was so weird in naming. The trigger is actually what's happening at the end, the end result, the action. It, the trigger is not something that happened that pushes something else, right? No, the trigger in this case is the end result. Argo events has about 11 different triggers that could happen. One of them is Argo workflows. So the trigger is basically a workflow that runs. Now, what is an Argo workflow? An Argo workflow is also installed through custom resource definitions. We install all the lists in our cluster through commands. We will go through how to install that. And then we have basically a YAML file that defines our workflow. Okay, workflow, Argo workflow. And that has, for example, different steps. Step one, step 1.1, 1 .1, step two, step three, step 3.1 and so on. Now, Argo events allows us to specify, first of all, the container images that each step should run. For example, these two should run within this container image. Then step two and three should run within this one. And then we have here, for example, another one. Or we have for each step actually separate container images. That could also be the case, right? So in this case, we can specify the different container images that we want to run our actions and or anything, any, any commands in any anything basically that we can put into a container image we can run within a workflow. And so once the processes within those container image have finished, the container will be spin down and the process has finished and we can see in our cluster, okay, this container has finished, it's done, bye. Okay. So this is ultimately what an Argo workflow does. It's just step-by-step -step process. And we can specify how are the, what are the different relations between those steps? Can we run them in parallel? Should they run after each other? Is one dependent on the other and so on? And there are different examples that we can also see in the documentation on how those are run. And this is ultimately what it does. So the installation process of all Argo tools are quite similar. We're First, going ahead and go to the documentation. So this is the Argo events documentation. And this is the quick start guide of the Argo workflows documentation. And for Argo events to work or for Argo events to use Argo workflows, we first need Argo workflows installed. And I'm hoping this is going to work this time because the last time that did not work. So I'm right now here on my Google Kubernetes cluster, Google Cloud cluster. And I have no nothing installed, just the default stuff. QCal get all, just showing you everything. There's nothing really running. It's just fresh, completely fresh cluster, which is great. So then I'm going to create an Argo namespace for Argo workflows, I think. It's not Argo events, it's Argo workflows. So <laughs> we're just going to create the namespace and we're just following really the instructions here. So we're just going to go ahead and copy all of that, installing all of the resources. Now this is going to install those custom resource definitions we talked about a second ago. Okay. So this is going to install everything. Just going to wait for it to finish. It might look overwhelming, but it's not that bad. So now this is done. What do we do next? We don't, oh, we might need this because we are on Google cloud actually. Let's try without and see if it, everything is working. If it's not working, then we can still refer back to this command and figure out how to make it work. <laughs> okay, let's get QCal get all in namespace Argo. Maybe I should zoom a bit in. Okay, we're just waiting for everything here to run, all of the parts. We want them to work before we're going to move on to the next step. Okay, let's just wait if it's working or if it's not working. There might be crash loop backoffs. Okay, there's another crash loop backoff. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. I'm just going to fast forward for until this has finished. It should all spin up. Okay, everything seems to be running and fine now. Now we can go ahead and we can port forward and see if that's working. Okay, so let's open up localhost. 27, which one was it? Oh, you're seeing all of my Twitter now. <laughs> um, 2746, HTTPS. And then let's do this. Okay, so you have to go to HTTPS for it to work. Okay, uh, 
accept risk. And then we are at the Argo workflow UI. So Argo workflows, Argo CD, and now also with the new, with their newest release, Argo rollouts, they all have a UI. I don't think Argo events has a UI. We will take a look at that in a second, but all the others have a UI, okay? So as you can see, we don't have any workflows yet here. It's quite a comprehensive UI. We don't have any workflows yet. So let's go ahead and actually start a workflow. Now I already installed the Argo client. I just have to make sure that everything is... Let's open up another one. So let's check if we have Argo installed. We're gonna go ahead and say Argo and okay, there's a lot of stuff coming up. So it should all be there. It should all be, well, we should be able to use it. So let's go ahead and submit our first workflow. Now you can go ahead and check out this YAML file, copy Argo, submit in namespace Argo, and then that workflow name, right? So let's just post that here and see what happens. Okay, so now it's just running the workflow. It's gonna watch the workflow creation. So we're gonna wait and see what's gonna happen, if it's gonna work. Okay, so this, it's currently running. Container creation. Let's see if the container that runs this workflow is actually gonna work, it's actually gonna run and complete. Let's see, here we go. Awesome, this worked. So this part did not work for me on Azure, on Kind Cluster, on my Docker Desktop Cluster. Now, right now I'm on my Google Cloud Cluster and it worked, which makes me really happy um, because it didn't work before. And it basically, it's something with how they set up the access to Docker in this case, I believe. Now, here's several different commands. So we can list our current workflows and we can get a list of workflows. Let's see what those commands do. So list workflows. Okay, this is our latest workflow. Here we have a status message, awesome. And then we go ahead and we can also check the logs of our latest workflow. And here we have our little whale saying hello. Now we could modify our YAML file and let the whale say something else, right? So this is just basically a container with some arguments, like with a process and some arguments that runs and you can't see it, <laughs> that runs. And that's all it does, right? So, and then once it's finished, it just exits that, right? And we can see the logs of the container through the, through the client, through the Argo client. Really neat. So it's just a step of processes. Now you can have, when you go over to Argo workflows, let's go to operations manual. Let's find the, they have several different examples. Okay, so let's take a look at the step section. So let's just go ahead and copy that. And so what I've done, I've just copied, pasted what was defined in the documentation right here into our YAML file. So as you can see, we have here our different steps. We have here, the first step, which says hello one. And then we have our second step to A and to B, which execute in parallel because he has just here two dashes and he has just one dash. So those two go in parallel. So when you specify these YAML files with your workflows, you have to be really precise. That's like one of the downsides that you really have to take care of. Like, okay, do you specify the dash? How do you specify the dash? Right? So we have here those different steps and those steps, they refer to the same template. So we have here our template defined wall same. And the template name is here down here. This is the template and this is what these steps refer to. So they all provide into the same container. They run all the same container and provide into that container the same input message. So when we go into parameters, then we go into message. As you can see, it's nicely highlighted. And we have the message defined, the value of the message that we want to pass in. And we can go ahead and we can run this steps.yaml, does that work? Okay, so that's gonna run it. Okay, so as you can see, we're just running hello one, wall say, right? And now let's see if this is gonna run through and then, okay, it ran through and now, as you can see here in parallel, it's executing both hello to A and hello to B. And we can just follow here in the client, it executing, but we could also go ahead and open the UI, and as you can see, we have here, I don't know, which one is it? 
this one. What's gonna happen? <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so as you can see, we have here nicely visualized the different stops. So we have hello one and then hello two B and hello two A. And similar, so just execute in parallel after hello one executed. And then we can also specify different templates that we can then reuse for our different workflows, because obviously we don't want to duplicate our different workflows. We want to reuse the templates over time. So you could specify your different templates here. And there's a lot of different cool stuff that you can do. So this is just a steps example, as you can see. Now there's also a DAG example where you basically have different dependencies. So direct SLA graph, you have just different dependencies between those different steps. So as you can see, these two, so we have here step name A and then step name B is dependent on step name A and same with C and then D is dependent on B and C to have finished executing. And that's how you can specify different dependencies between those, between you, within your workflow, between those different containers executing. Now there are lots and lots of different examples that you can go through and try out and plug and play it together. It's really straightforward, really. Now, I sadly didn't get Argo events to work and connect to Argo workflows. I went through it several times. I hope you have an idea still of how those different tools are used, how you would make use of them. <laughs> and Argo workflows in itself is really amazing. Just connecting it with the Argo events is a bit of a jup -jup step at the stone kind of situation, I guess. <laughs> so I hope this is getting better in the future, but uh, maybe I did something wrong if you spotted something or like if you have any suggestions or if you want to write a blog post on how you set up Argo events and Argo workflows, I think I could use that a lot. So <laughs> let me know. Anyway, I hope to see you in one of my future videos. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.